It is one of the most pivotal moments in the University of Minnesota's history, and you may not even know about it. It was 1969, the year after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Racial unrest and violence was common on university campuses. A group of African American students at the U of M decided they would try to change the course of history for all students of color. In honor of Black History Month, our Susan Elizabeth Littlefield reunited with some of those students who have quite a story to tell. Even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. When you think of the civil rights movement, you likely think of the South. But the University of Minnesota had a movement of their own. And these are the faces behind it. Before streaming music, before cell phones, Morrill Hall stood as it does today, and 70 students stood in it. You all come on in. A half a century later, we invited them back together to tell you their story. I never saw another black student in class. There were only a few hundred African American students on campus in the late 60s. Hattie Webb wasn't able to claim this journalism scholarship she earned. Registrar told me, um, well, we don't have any uh, colored kids in uh, school of Journalism, it must be a mistake. Um, you're supposed to be in general college. Racial tensions were at a pitch, especially after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. Days after, Afro-American Action Committee members united, and they came up with a list of demands. This was the first step. They enlisted the help of St. Paul community leader, Mahmoud al Khati. Told them that whatever the students did, the black community was behind them. That's what we want the university to know. Right. Alkati helped them draft a list of seven things, like MLK scholarships for black students, a history department that reflected their heritage, and to be represented on student committees. Those original seven demands were as much statements of principle mm -hmm. as they were bargaining chips and negotiating principles. We presented the demands, and there was no action. That's right. And then we decided we're going to march. That was the beginning. After nine months of waiting, they decided to take over Morrill Hall, barricading the doors, insisting that University President Malcolm Moves meet their requests. Part of the taking over of Morrill Hall was really about um, black students saying, we are not going to continue to live on a campus that is exclusionary and racist. The National Guard surrounded the building and they stood together through the night including the school's only black baseball player. I remember thinking, if I go to practice, then what if something happens, and then you I... made the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and then I got, and, and nothing happened to me because I had gone to practice. So I just, I made the decision, and I stayed, and, uh, you know, and that was probably the end of my baseball career at the University of Minnesota. So. A sacrifice that was not in vain, nor were the sacrifices of these three all arrested for unlawful assembly. President Moose agreed to meet their demands, a movement the university historian says was pivotal. After it happened, uh, the vice president for academic affairs says, said it gave us a needed kick in the pants. While still the minority, there are now 10 times as many black students as there were in the late 60s, and 20% of the student body are people of color. There's also a thriving African American studies program. John Wright is part of it. And there's an office of support for diverse students. People did come before us, and they really fought for us to have a voice on campus and be able to have space <laughs> to be us and to be free. Proving to show your might you don't need an army, just a few dedicated soldiers. Susan Elizabeth Littlefield, WCCO 4 News. Muhammad Ali heard about the Morrill Hall takeover, and he came to campus to meet those march marchers personally. Their actions also set in motion other diversity programs like women's studies, Chicano studies, and gender studies.